We did it. We did it, Joe. You're gonna be the next president of the United States. <laughs> Hello. Um, welcome to Audrey's Theory. My name is Jordan. And um, on this channel, we are going to be discussing um, geopolitical politics, current events, all types of uh, topics and um, happenings around the world um, through a radical black queer lens. Um, so yeah, this is the first episode. Um, I promise the videos are gonna get better from here. Um, but stay tuned. Today we are discussing uh, Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris and their first bullshit initiatives that they are trying to run through the White House show. Um, we'll also be talking about um, the farmers' protest that's going on in India right now. Um, and yeah, so stay tuned. First, um, just like a quick one-two punch. Um, the Biden administration wants to speed up the release of the new Harriet Tubman twenty dollar bill that was passed in the Obama administration and kind of like slowed down by Trump because Trump is a white supremacist, as is Joe Biden. Um, but now as part of Joe Biden's like um, racial equity plan or initiative, um, he wants to like get that to the black people quicker, you know, so that we can like go and spend our twenty dollars in this and participate in this like capitalist hellhole and look at Harriet Tubman's face while we do it. Love that for us. I'm so excited. Um, th the thing about Harriet Tubman is that Harriet Tubman was a slavery abolitionist. Um, she freed herself and many, many, many other slaves through something known as Underground Railroad. That is basic slavery history that the United States teaches everyone generally. Um, they don't teach you much else than that. But everyone pretty much knows who Harriet Tubman is. Um, she also later became a spy for the Union Army um, and an activist for women's suffrage. What's weird to me is that we are assuming that Harriet Tubman would want to be on the $20 bill of the United States, a country that hasn't actually abolished slavery yet. Like, mm, the 13th Amendment definitely said that you can enslave people if they're incarcerated. Um, so, I don't think she'd want to be on the $20 bill. I feel like she would. that would be one of the last things she wants. Um, this is just like a really stupid ploy to try and appease black people and throw us a symbolic bone after the traumatic summer that we had after the death of George Floyd and many, many others at the hands of police. Um, I'm sure the Biden administration is just trying to give us a bunch of little lollipops like we're at the doctor's office and, you know, Make all the niggas calm down and smile and make us all hold hands and skip on over to the grocery store to pick up our, you know, whatnots with our $20 Harriet Tubman bill. And I'm not interested in that. Um, this does not atone or apologize or begin to even reconcile slavery, white supremacy, mass incarceration, gentrification, Jim Crow, any of those things that have came in the aftermath of slavery. Um, it does not equal reparations. It's pure symbolism and shitty symbolism at that. Like, I don't want Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill. Like, I think sis would be pissed. I would be pissed, cha. Like, I do all this work trying to bring people to freedom. To freedom? You think Harriet Tubman was walking around with a fucking nice shiny fucking dress on with a fucking crown on her head when she was taking slaves? And y'all gonna put me on the toilet, I'll build, but my people ain't free yet? Child, no. I'm gonna take a pass. Um, I'm going to pass. Yeah, like, it, 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 it's merely symbolic. If he wants actual, you know, to make actual reparations, I mean, racial equity, he should give us reparations, uh, which won't happen. He should, you know, provide health care for everyone, including black people. He should give us a living wage. Um, like, Harriet Tubman being on the $20 bill is not making my life tangibly better in any way. Um, so yeah. Um, next, Joe Biden signs an executive order um, requiring the Department of Justice 
to end its contract with private prisons as part of him and Kamala's racial equity plan. Um, first of all, <laughs> Kamala doing anything about private prisons is like really sort of funny to me because um, she like definitely put a bunch of black people in prison when she was the district, I mean the, uh, the district attorney or attorney general of California. Um, and it's, yeah, that's just funny to me. Like, girl, didn't you lock trans women in jails for, with men? Didn't you do that? Didn't you lock a black woman up? Like, put her in physical jail, in prison, because her son was skipping school, because he had to work, because they couldn't afford for him not to work, to live, and for there not to be two incomes in the house. But you put her in jail. Like, rather than just like fix the institutional things that are making it so that a kid doesn't have the option to go to school, but rather has to go and work. Like, please, please. I need somebody to explain it to me. I need somebody to explain it to me. Make it make sense. It doesn't, because it, it can't. Um, also, like, this only applies to the Department of Justice using private prisons. It doesn't apply to any other government agency that uses private prisons. It also doesn't apply to federal and state prisons that while they do technically have the illegal oversight of being ran by the state, they're still terrible, 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 oppressive, evil, slave-like institutions filled with black and brown men and women. Um, like, that's not addressing anything, that's not, I don't feel like this is any sort of substantial jump towards prison reform, towards abolition, you know, I do not believe personally in prison reform, um, I don't believe that there should be prisons, um, I don't believe there should be police, um, yeah, you know, but that's for another day, I do plan on doing a video, a deep dive into abolition in the future. Um, but yeah, this doesn't apply to other government agencies, particularly one that comes to mind that it definitely should apply to is ICE. Because ICE is probably one of the most evil entities running in the United States right now. It's so evil, child. Let me just run you through, you know, a, like, like, a, like some, you know, like a, like, like a modicum, like a little piece. Um, a taste, if you will, of the he of the atrocities that ICE has um, committed upon refugees and immigrants. Um, Ninety-one percent of people who are detained by ICE are detained in private prisons. Let's start there. Um, ICE has separated children from their parents, often with no intent of recruiting them, of often with no eat often with no intent of reuniting them. Um, they had terrible, 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 um, dangerous, deathly responses to COVID-19. Um, 39 adults have died in ICE custody, since ICE, in ICE custody. Thirty-nine adults have died in ICE custody since 2017, 12 by suicide. Refugees have been, um, starved of medication that they need, like inhalers and insulin, left to suffer with broken bones for weeks before a doctor came to set the bone and cast it. Um, also last year, a whistleblower, a black woman, a hero, Don Wooten, who was a nurse at an ICE detention facility in Georgia, um, whistle blew to The Intercept about the terrible COVID-19 practices that ICE employed, um, they withheld PPE from staff members and from, de and from refugees. Um, they like dismissed positive COVID results and then lied on the reportings about them. They ignored symptoms and patients with symptoms and did not follow social distancing rules. People were still sleeping in close proximity in cages on, you know, thin foil mats. Um, and yeah, I mean, one, one per there's been like reports of while in the middle of the pandemic, like the, the refugees that protested the living conditions 
were handcuffed and pepper spayed and thrown into solitary confinement together um, after protesting that, you know, like, y'all are gonna get us killed. Um, it's, it's crazy. ICE, ICE is um, evil. And when I say abolition, when I say ACAB, that implies to ICE as well. Um, that all needs to go. You know, like, we can't even begin to discuss or deal with, like, with prison reform, quote unquote, or any sort of racial equity plan if it doesn't include how we're treating immigrants, black and brown immigrants at the Mexican border, also black immigrants that are coming from the Caribbean, which people don't talk about. Um, you know, we can't even begin to have those discussions if we're not addressing how those people are treated um, in detainment centers, which are not technically prisons, but they act as a prison. And that's insane. All for people seeking asylum. Um, yeah, and next I'd like to talk about... Hmm, uh, hmm, Biden signed uh, an executive order undoing Trump's military ban of transgender people. Um, if you don't remember, I think in 2018, 2017, Donald Trump banned transgender people from serving in the military, um, which is just a part of his sort of, you know, LGBT, anti-LGBTQ, you know, stance and legislation and all of that. Not surprising, right? But also, like, um, I don't personally, I mean, I'll speak for myself, but I think I'm speaking for a lot of other trans people and queer people as well. Um, I have no interest in being in the military. Um, you could not, there is nothing, nothing that you could do to make me join the military. I would rather, um, I would rather shove a pine cone up my butt than fight for the US military. Um, mm. I would rather have every toenail and every fingernail ripped off than fight for the U.S. military. I would rather see, um, hmm. Hmm. I would rather see, um, I would rather never have sex again, ever. I would rather be celibate. I would rather castrate myself than and become a eunuch um, than fight for the US military. Like there's nothing that you could ever do to make me fight for the US military. If there's a draft, you will never find me. You will never see me. If you do see me, it will be me fighting for, against the US military. But if, but, but you are not going to see me in no army barracks. Like you're not gonna see me. You're not gonna see me wearing no camo. You're not gonna see no patches on me. Um, I'm not gonna be standing for the for the for the pledge of allegiance. I'm not gonna be waving the American flag, child. There is literally nothing that you can make my black ass do to fight for the U.S. government. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think that is the same for the vast majority of trans people. What's crazy is that like. <sighs> Capitalism has completely taken over the LGBTQ liberation movement. It's like called rainbow capitalism is the idea. It's like, you know, America has found a way to convince marginalized people that, um, that they can participate in the things, the same things that have been oppressing them for so long as if we would want to, you know? It's like, I, I don't want to stick a rainbow flag on an F-22 Raptor and, you know, kill other trans and black and brown queer people in foreign countries. Like, that's not liberation for me. I don't feel good about that. I don't feel equal, like, because I can do that. Like, that is, that's not, that, that doesn't mean anything to me. What would be equal is if y'all would stop killing black trans women. Like, why don't you just stop killing black trans women? Or um, why don't you stop passing discriminatory and dangerous uh, bathroom bill laws to trying to tell people where and when they can go to the bathroom? Um, why don't you provide trans people with the safe and affordable health care that they need to survive? Why don't you stop discrimin discriminating against them in the workplace and in the health care? You know, 
why don't you stop throwing trans women into male prisons and facilities? It's confusing. You know, 2020 was the deadliest year on record for trans people, black trans women, for trans women. Um, there were 44 trans women murdered, the vast majority of them black, um, because, you know, trans massage noir is a real thing. It's, you know, it's obviously this country is rooted in patriarchy and that breeds misogyny. And then you have black specific misogyny, the hate of black women, misogynoir. And then you have the hate of trans people, transphobia mixed with misogynoir. So now you have a specific systemic hate for black trans women that results in violence and results in, in death at an overwhelming um, percent compared to the rest of the population. You know, so it's like, I don't, I don't want to be able to go to the military. I, I don't want to die, you know? Like, I would just like y'all to stop killing us. Like, don't kill me. Don't kill people that look like me. Just stop that. I don't want it, you know? Um, so no, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna go to, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to go to a foreign country to kill someone while y'all kill me at home. That's not gonna happen. Um, black people have already tried to do that. We tried to do that in Vietnam, you know? We went and fought and killed a bunch of Vietnamese people for no reason because the government told us that communism was bad. And then we came home and got beat in the streets and bit by dogs and sprayed in wa by water hoses. So, uh, y'all aren't, y'all aren't, y'all aren't getting past me this time. Um, so it's not gonna work this time. I'm not gonna cut it. <laughs> okay, better cut. Um, uh, you know, part of the strategy behind things like this is to like, I mean, it's part of the military industrial complex. It's trying to get everyone to buy into imperialism, to buy into capitalism. And these structures work best when everyone has the idea that equality and liberation means I have the same amount of opportunity to oppress somebody else, right? Like, I can be rich, I can have a house and a picket fence, I can participate in the subjugation and oppression of other people, just like all these white people can in America now, because we're equal, you know? We're equal as Americans to oppress and subjugate the rest of the world. Next, um, we're going to be talking about the farmer protests in India. Um, I'm going to have some links in the description below so that you guys can, you know, do some more of your own research in depth. Um, but to sum up a very sort of long thing, um, so the Prime Minister of India, Moody, is basically like the Indian version of Trump, except that he actually won his re-election. Um, he is a fascist. And he is trying to change the agricultural laws um, in a way that would like affect, very much negatively affect um, farmers and, and basically like industrialize the industry and take it out of the hands of the people. Um, and India is a 50% um, agricultural country um, and they were originally operating before Moody changed the laws um, through this national food market system that was originally designed to protect farmers because um, the government recognized that farmers have the most to lose um, and are the most likely to be exploited by traders and businesses and corporations or the government so they set a market price standard for trading um, so they would like um, go to these markets in India and trade with individ with uh, traders and um, the government has prices set up that are like these standards. So you could get paid more or less. I mean, you could get paid more than the standard, but you could not ever be paid less than what the market standard was. Um, and they also had um, laws preventing um, like limiting the amount of food that a trader could store up. Um, because then that would allow them to have a monopoly on trade. On, I mean, on that would allow them to have a monopoly on food, on crops, that they could then, you know, kind of change the market price and do all these sorts of things that just aren't fair um, and aren't creating equal competition, which that doesn't actually exist, but I'll explain that why. 
Um, and you know, it's already really difficult now in current years for farmers to make a living in India, even before Moody changed the laws. Um, 15% of the economy is now, even though it's like 50% of the country is agricultural, only 15% of the economy is a result of um, farmers. Um, and all, and then, and more than half of Indian farmers are in debt. Um, you know, it's there's 20,000 farmers who have committed suicide over the past two years because of the vast economic and inequality in the research that they just don't have. Um, because, you know, the world is it's already still not a perfect system. But now it has become much, much worse because um, Moody has literally undone all of the protections, the little protection that the farmer already had. You are now allowed to trade outside of the regulated market, which leaves room for corporations to trade with no oversight. Um, it also is going to cause like traders who are working in the regulated market to leave and go to the unregulated market in the interest of making profit. And then you have the you leave farmers with two losing choices. They can either choose to stay in the regulated market, which will now have more competition because there's less traders still there because um, they've all left and then they'll make less money. Or they can go to the deregulated market, make less money, and suffer all sorts of abuses from corporations and traders that can collude and do all these sorts of things um, in the interest of profit, not in the interest of them. Um, so people have taken to the streets. It is the largest protest in the history of the world. Um, the largest protest in the history of the world. Um, we should be paying attention. Americans should be paying attention to what is happening in India to not only how the government is, you know, treating its citizens, but also how the citizens are responding. Um, you know, the thing about deregulated markets is they're not real. You're either going to have the government that regulates the market, or you're going to have the, whoever has the most money and the most influence regulating the market. And that's what's going to end up happening as um, corporations and, you know, traders kind of monopolize the farming industry and basically turn it into a completely industrialized thing um, and uprooting the individual farmers that make up 50% of the of the of the labor force um, so you know in response to the protests India has shut down the government in certain states uh, to prevent people from communicating with each other and to prevent you know information and videos of the brutality um, that is going on, that is happening to the protesters. Um, they have been tear gassed. Um, like I said, they cut the internet, baton charges. Um, like, can you imagine any of the protests over the summer where the internet was cut as well? Can you imagine that? Where like we're not able to communicate with each other as well as being tear gassed and shot with our bullets, you know? So it's also important for us to know because Americans live in this like complete isolated bubble of Americanness. Our media inundates us with United States, United States, United States, and they make us like the center of the world in a very, very intentional way um, so that we don't look at how the rest of the world's struggles are connected to ours and how the U.S. is, is the cause of the vast majority. Uh, of the world struggles, and if they're not the cause, they have their hands in there somewhere. They they dip it in the pot, you know. They sprinkle a little on. They're in there, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, it makes us the center of ourselves. Um, yeah, it, um, it it allows us to like separate the U.S and what it's currently doing in the world. You know, the U.S. still uses its political and imperial powers around the world to back undemocratic coups in the name of oil or the suppression of communism or all these things that we say are bad or the things that we say that we need, you know? Um, and also, the United States studies, literally studies, um, India's methods of counterinsurgency so that they can employ those tactics domestically on us. And I'm sure they also study other countries as well. But there is a, um, I'll link it in the description, um, a, a journal published by the Institutes for National Strategic Studies. 
National Strategic Studies. National Strategic Studies, interesting name. Um, they're in Washington, D.C. In 2004, they published a journal called India's Naxalite Insurgency History Trajectory and Implications for U.S.-India Security Cooperation. U.S. and in India. Security Cooperation on Domestic Insurgency. Cooperating on Domestic Insurgencies. Hmm. For security purposes. Yeah. Um, basically, it's like they send methods of state violence to each other in a group chat. You know, it's like they, uh, you got the US, Brazil, Israel, India, um, <laughs> and Saudi Arabia, um, you know, sends in, you know, DM each other. You got the US, Brazil, Israel, India, Saudi Arabia, you know, um, hitting each other up in WhatsApp. Talking about, hey, look y'all, tear gas. And someone else like, oh my god, hey, look y'all, we cut the internet so the world can't see us slaughtering our citizens in the streets. Oh my god. Like, yes, state violence is my favorite. You know, they stand it. They love it. They feed off of it. They share information and techniques with each other. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. America is a terrifying place. A terrifying, terrifying place. Um, and... Joe Biden and Kamala Harris ha are not going to make it less terrible. Uh, they're not going to make it less imperial. Um, they're not going to make it less oppressive and less colonial and less white supremacist um, and less capitalist. Damn sure, they're not going to make it less capitalist. Um, yeah, and speaking of capitalism, another reason that this is important for Americans to know is because it is important for us to be in global solidarity with other colonized peoples against state violence and white supremacy and capitalism and colonialism. All of the struggles of colonized people around the world are interconnected. We should all be interested in having conversations and learning more about international black and brown freedom struggles and engaging in how the U.S. has played a part in the subjugation of black and brown people across the world. You know. We should also be communicating with each other in the same way that the U.S. is communicating with other foreign oppressive governments. We should be communicating with the people who are participating in these freedom struggles around the world. You know, we have things to learn from them. Like India is having the largest protests in the world. Like we, I mean, that's that's just not gonna happen in America. We are punks, period. So like, just thinking. You know, I'm not a punk, I'm not a punk, but like, you know, the vast majority of us are punks. We, we aren't going to move too far out of our comfort zone to change things. Um, and that's because we have, you know, bought into the propaganda that pretty much things are all right here and that things can never get like India or Brazil or Saudi Arabia or any of these other countries that we judge and frown down upon, you know? But yeah, anyway. Fuck white supremacist patriarchal capitalism. <laughs> all right, y'all. So um, this is the end of my first video. Uh, sorry if it was all over the place. I hope it was informative and entertaining. Um, give me critiques. Let me know if there's other sort of methods or ways of filming you would prefer. Let me know if there's topics that you want me to cover and I would be happy to research them and cover them. Um, I think the next two, Things I want to talk about, I want to do like a deep dive into Amazon and why we should all be, we should all never use Amazon and why we should be on a mission to, um, don't want to get blocked from YouTube, but we should be, we should be on a mission for Jeff Bezos, that's all I'm going to say. We should be on a mission for him. Um, and I also want to do a deep dive video on abolition. Um, but yeah, you guys can follow my social media. It's Audrey's Theory on Instagram and Twitter like and subscribe and share this video if you found it funny or informative or entertaining or if you just like staring at me because I'm pretty um and yeah and also comment drop your opinions let me know what you think about some of the ideas I posed in the video um but if your opinions are going to be racist transphobic homophobic sexist classist ableist I'm gonna cuss you out like, no, like it's true. It's true. I will cuss you out. <laughs> okay, bye.